everybody, this is Brother Paxton. I'm coming to you again today from Rockbridge County, Virginia, the land of my ancestors. And I want to talk to you about the way that prayer affects places uh, briefly. It really affects more. Uh, prayer will affect places, times, occasions, and circumstances. Prayer just affects and has the potential to change anything in the power of God. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, it says this, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. In other words, completely, totally sanctified. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Prayer is what it takes to persevere and push through the times that we're living in today. And in reality, it took prayer in every time frame. It took prayer in every generation to live for God, to live holy, to have the mind renewed. I mean, it takes the Word, it takes the Holy Spirit, and it takes prayer. Prayer changes things, but prayer has the potential to change everything. Prayer has to do with God and everything that's related to God. Prayer has an intimate and special relationship to the church. A church should be a sacred place, set apart uh, from all unholy and secular uses for the worship of God alone. Let me say that again. E.M. Bounds, put it this way. A church should be a sacred place, set apart from all unholy and secular uses, exclusively for the worship of God. As worship is prayer, it's, it's other things too, but worship is prayer. The house of God is a place set apart exclusively for worship. It's not a common place. It's not a hangout. It's a sacred and a holy place. It is where God will dwell, where he meets with his people, where he meets their needs, and where he delights in the worship of his saints. And I, I really think in some ways we have lost that perspective of the church. Now I understand that people are the church, you and me are the church, and the building itself holds no special holiness. But I believe we should approach church with a reverent attitude, not to be entertained, but rather to worship God and to pray and seek his face, hear his word preached, to love others in the community, and also to give to the work of the Lord. And I think that we need to get back to that and we will see our prayer lives take on a mighty uh, change for the better. I think answers to prayer may come swifter. Uh, the time between the sowing of the seed and the reaping of the harvest will be lessened as we begin to elevate spiritual life to a higher priority and place of total separation. Now, let me say this, as a Christian, I am separated completely unto God, but I am not isolated from the people in the world. Those are the people we need to reach. And so we're not talking about isolation. We're not talking about weirdness, okay? As a Christian, you don't have to be weird. You don't have to look weird, dress weird, talk weird, any of that, okay? But God is holy, and we should treat him as such, and we should treat church as holy as well. So from Rockbridge County, Virginia today, let me encourage you, Go to God and he will revolutionize your prayer life because in this critical hour, we need prayer warriors as we've never needed them before. Go with God and he will go with you. Bless you.